So a lot of them don't realise it, some do, but we're actually always on edge. So we're always looking over our shoulder or whatnot to see what's happening. It might be police, it might be the next group of men, but always on edge, do you know what I mean? If we're talking about the times we're living in now, the cost of living, bro, there's no time to be doing lifestyle, bro. Like, I think that's the real mission, making sure you're doing people right, you keep, the, you keep your integrity and you're just honest, you're just an honest person, honestly. Comparison is the fee for joy. I always, I've even got it written on my whiteboard at home, comparison is the fee for joy. I feel like when I compare myself to a lot of my peers, that's when I think, fuck, why am I not doing enough? Past, present, future, episode 46, which is crazy. So I'm really excited for this one. I feel like the reason I'm so excited is because it's someone that I would say is in a relatively similar position to myself, but doing things in a slightly different way as well. So I'm interested to get into the mind. So um, it'd be great if initially you could introduce yourself briefly yeah. for the people that maybe don't know what you're doing and, and what you're about, and we can go from there. Yeah, um, so content creator, um, music personality, and an A and R essentially as well, mm -hmm. um, but I'll say primarily a music personality revolving around everything UK rap, mm -hmm. or I'll just say hip hop in general. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll say that to be honest. Hundred percent. So to get into it and to track back to the origins yeah. of Flashy Silla. So I understand from reading various articles that you grew up in Tottenham. So yeah. I just wanted for you to paint a picture of how that was growing up in that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, um, I grew up in Tottenham. North London is like, like born and raised. And Tottenham, I mean, when people ask me that, it's like, I'm quite, I'm quite used to it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But if someone was to see outside looking in, you would think it's just a mad place, even though it isn't proven now. Do mm. you know what I mean? Um, went to school in Tottenham, went to, went to the same school with like Chip, Rimsey. I think even Professor Green went to my school as well. But um, it was, it was, yeah, growing up, there were tough moments. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I have, I have been through tough moments, but I think, what I present on camera and how people know me now, it's like mad positive and, mm. and I'm always smiling and that. But that's because when I was in my early teenage years, people that know me, shortest views, like I will go off, off, off any little thing, mm. do you know what I mean? And like just temper fighting and whatnot. So obviously as I grew, like, and as I matured, it's like, I realized, yo, like just chill out, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I feel like that was just frustration seeing so many things over the years. Um, and what yeah. sorts of things? Like, of, like, I grew up in a council estate, do you know what I mean? So I'm seeing a lot of things from young. Mm -hmm. I might see a stabbing. I might see um, someone just literally getting robbed. A pizza man, like little things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like eight, seven, seeing a pizza man getting robbed by one of the oldest in the estate. Or literally just scuffs, like just having fist fights with a couple men, whether that's in school, or whether that's just like randomly. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I think... Yeah, I, I like I like this perception people have got of me now because if you knew me back then, mm -hmm. it would be so easy to tick me off just like that. But yeah, grow, like growing up in Tottenham, I think I've always been a people's person, so I've always fitted into all of the crowds. Mm -hmm. Never been a bad boy, mm -hmm. never been on the bad boy team. I think I've always known better than that. You know what I mean? Because my parents, I did grow up in a two parent household with um, I'm, I'm the youngest of four, mm -hmm. uh, three bedroom yard, but there's like ten people living in it. So obviously. I'm well mannered, mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, like when people see me, it's just like, I like what they see, what they get. What, mm -hmm. you, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that's interesting about that you said there, you mentioned stabbing. So when I was doing like some research on the area, I came across an article. I'm not sure like how accurate it is, but like they were quoted saying that people live in fear. There's violence everywhere. There's stabbings, this, yeah. that, and the other. How accurate is that? Yeah, yeah, no, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm quite used to seeing these things anyway. Like, I've seen a man get stabbed right before my eyes, you know what I mean? How did that feel in the moment? You say in you're used moment, to it now yeah. in, in reaction, but how did that feel in the moment? In the moment, it's like adrenaline. Like, it's just a group of us, but then we're seeing someone getting chased and then he's getting ducked down and then boom, it just happened in the moment. And then two seconds later, he's on the floor and he's leading. But then it's like in the moment, because I've seen it prior already, it's like, it's happened again. Mm. It's like, okay, cool, it's happened again. I'm not shocked, but I'm like, whoa, do you know what I mean? And it's always a whoa, because someone just got stabbed regardless, innit? So yeah, um, I'll say, like, sorry, what, what was the question again? 
So I wanted to understand how accurate the representation oh, yeah. of the area is. Yeah, that it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I grew up in the, on the border of Tottenham and Hackney, so there's just a lot going on. It is accurate. I would say it is accurate, mm. but I'm not going to say like it was like Iraq or Gaza or whatnot. No, man, it's not like sh- Chicago. Mm. But it was bad, in it, especially during the early 2010s when I was growing up. It was bad. I'll come out of school, school gates, I'll see like 20 gang members. And if you don't know them, man, <laughs> they're stripping you and they're taking everything that you got, man, honestly. So yeah, I've just, I've just like, I've been, I've been lucky enough to be familiar, be a familiar face in the ends, mm-hmm. but that's just about it. And I think people respect me that I'm not, I've never chased a bad boy thing. I've always been me and I've played football. So playing football, you just come across so many different men. Mm. So that's how I know a lot of people in Tottenham and the surrounding areas as well. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned football. So I was reading the complex um, article, complex, yeah. sorry. And you were saying that ultimately people's mindsets in the area where you're from is footballer, rapper, mm. um, or, or, or a shot or a drug dealer. Yeah, <laughs> or a drug dealer. So I yeah. wanted to ask you, which of those three paths originally you said you had a sort of short three fuse were you closest to going down um no i, I was football was my thing football was, was my first love and it still is my first love do you know what i mean if i could take back the years i would i would be a footballer bro because um i actually i used to play for oxford united um like as a, um under 18s mm-hmm. so i used to go up there and come down on the weekends back to london so i was from like about 17 years old to like 19 i was a bit out of touch with the ends but then um when i got back obviously i came i became accustomed to things again but yeah football it's always been a football thing i've i've i've, I've got an older brother who mm-hmm. was on badness and i've seen it like i like i said i've never been a dumb guy i mm-hmm. never wanted to chase the the drug dealer thing or mm-hmm. the the gangbanging thing and I always liked football. Mm. So I feel like those three routes, it was, okay, football. I like football. All of, all of my boys growing up, we always liked football. We went to Broadwater Farm to play football. So that's mm. how I knew all of the members and whatnot. So yeah, to be honest, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And I guess what I'm trying to understand is I've watched a lot of your content. And what I think from that is that you're quite an empathetic person. Mm. So you could put yourself in someone else's shoes. And I think I was watching the Lippy blog yeah. report and you were almost mirroring the experiences that he's had. Yeah. Where do you think that, I think it's quite a unique skill yeah. of being empathetic. Where do you think that comes from in your part? Oh, uh, my mother, man. <laughs> my mother is like, she's the softest woman. Do you know what I mean? She would open up her doors to anybody. Um, and I feel like being empathetic, you, because like I said, I've grown up around and seen a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So when I see someone is acting out of character, uh, a lot of the time I wouldn't think why are you acting like that I think okay, why is he acting like that mm. or like okay I get it do you know what I mean like I said I, when I was younger I had a short fuse it would take anything to tip me off so understanding that I know why some people may react to certain things a certain way or like you said the Lippy episode I could see why when he was younger he might have just been on badness like the same way I could have easily went down mm. that path do you know what I mean so yeah what do you think stopped you from going down that path um my friend, I, like I've, I've seen my, I've seen my boys get stabbed. I've seen them catch cases. I've seen mad things. So when these things were happening, I was playing football, coming back to the ends on the weekends, and I'm hearing these stories that ah, oh, so and so just got robbed. So and so just got stabbed. And I'm thinking, yo, I'm in Oxford playing football, training every day and playing football matches, going up and down the country. So I'm like, yeah, you lot stay safe, man. But mm. <laughs> yo, I'm not trying to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, before I went to Oxford United and when I went up, before I started playing football at a decent level, it could have easily went down that path if I stayed in London. I think that's why even my parents encouraged me to go up mm. to Oxford to play football because they knew where, where we were situated was just a mad place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You spoke about, we've spoke about the three paths yeah. and I read you want to be kind of the the pioneer for the fourth path, which is mm. the media guy. So when did the football love mm. and pursuit of football change? Uh, when I got released. So when I got released from Oxford, I was too old to play for the, um, I was too old to actually continue. So I came back to the ends and I thought to myself, I went, I went to uni actually. When I, when I finished with football, I went to uni. Uni was never for me. I never liked school. Mm. So it was like, I dropped out of uni a year and a half in. I was 21. And then I thought, what do I love? Because I, I felt myself becoming a bum. I mm-hmm. hate not doing shit. So I was like, oh, what do I love? I've always been that hip hop guy. Everyone's mm. always known me as the music guy. And 
I was like, okay, cool. I'll create a podcast and then we'll go from there. But I want to make it more music focused. And then I'll comment on music on Twitter and whatnot, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was it, to be honest. I want to ask you actually a little bit about the football. Yeah. So how tough mentally was yeah. it getting released? Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. I knew that when, 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 when it was done, I was like, okay, the, the dream's dead. Even though I still got regions that are playing now and they're almost just about to blow up. I thought the dream's dead. And it was tough. Like any youth player would tell you, like when they got released, they fell into depression. I would, I would like, I would say the same. I would like to say the same, but I don't want to brand it as depression. I just want to brand it as, yo, I got released. Um, there's just a dark cloud over my head. I'll get over it. I think that's when, I'm, I think with me, I'm quite quick to pick myself back up again. So it might have taken a couple of months, even though I was playing football for years prior, but I can manage to pick myself up again. But it was tough though, because I did continue to play football at a lower level, but the love for it never died. That's where it hurt. Mm. So when the love for it never, when the love for it still hasn't died, it's like, uh, I feel like I could have done better. Mm. Especially going hard at what I do now with the media. If I put that into the football, I could have been in, in a different position, to be honest. What regrets do you have then? Um, I would say effort. I was lazy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was lazy, man. I think I'm more, I will say I'm more passionate about what I do now than when I was, um, when I was playing football. But I, for the love, the love for football was stronger than this, definitely. How would you explain that? Um, I would say, I would say football, fo like I said, football is my first love, bro. Like football is the first love before hip hop music, it was football. So I would go outside, play with my mates. We'll be kicking ball. We might listen to some music, but that was about it. When we're young, we're not thinking about music. We're thinking about football, 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 football. Mm. Let's play outside at school, playground, break time, lunchtime, football. Mm. So I feel like that's the love, but the passion as I matured, it was the music. Mm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm trying to think of the parallels between yeah. putting so much effort into that football career for it to be taken away from you and then obviously the music side of things. So I guess what I'm thinking, I hadn't thought about this until now, how much drive does it give you to go even harder at the music knowing that it could be exactly the same? You could put everything yeah. into it. You could do so much and in five years it could be taken away from you. How much more drive does that give you to make this one succeed yeah because it's all i got it's honestly all i got i feel like this because i love it so much second like i don't want to keep comparing it to football but because football and music are my, my biggest passions football didn't work cool music i'm gonna go as hard as i can with it and it seems to be working the media stuff it seems to be working so i'm gonna double down on it it will work. That's my mindset. It mm -hmm. will work. And I've, I've seen like I've seen certain things come to fruition. Um, that's just made me think in five years, I am going to be clear. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like I've doubled down on what I'm doing now. And yeah, I'm just doubling down, literally just doubling down. Yeah, I think it's really important. I, I just wanted to kind of ask because it is similar in the sense yeah. that you could put so much into it and it could be taken away from you in the click of a finger unless, like you say, you double down on it. So, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a little bit about pain. The reason is, is obviously it's apparent that you've been through various things. Now, I think the difference between a successful adult and a non-successful adult is a successful adult will deal with pain in the right way and mm. take it and harness it, mm. whereas someone else will, will not use it in the right way. So I wanted to understand from you, like, what's the most painful situation you've been through in your past? Um, oh, to get really personal, I would say when my mother was ill or yeah, because yeah, when my mother was ill, um, I would say about when I was like 13, 14, so about year eight, year nine, she was in hospital for like a year straight. And I'm not even talking in and out of hospital. I'm talking in hospital or for a year straight, heart surgery in hospital. So I'm going, I'm after school, I'm going to, I'm going to see my mum, and I'm leaving the hospital at like 7 PM. Do you know what I mean? A few of my friends at the time they knew about it they'll come bring her flowers and whatnot but i think that's where the anger came from when mm -hmm. i was younger so when i'll go to school i'll just want to fight do you know what i mean or it's a thing where it's like in school i don't even want some of my school friends to see because they're still my bridges now they're like my brothers but like i wasn't just i wasn't just um erratic it was just that if you poke me mm. I'm going off and that's just because I know when I when school finishes I'm going to see my mum 
You know what I mean? And she she's just gonna be in bed. She might she might be crying or whatnot. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like that was the most that's the most painful thing. Um, and I've been in hospitals my whole life because my mother she's obviously a heart, heart patient, and um, that, that seeing that from young, I've just been accustomed to it. So I've seen my my, my boys get stabbed and go in hospital. My mother's ill, going hospital. My dad might be ill, going hospital. So it's like, yeah, it's just. I feel like that's. I feel like when I was 13, 14, that period was the most painful because it was, it was, it was clouded. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. How did you cope with it? Um, I'll say. I've never been a drugs man. <laughs> never been. Never been a. I never smoked from early. Never drank from early. Like I said, it was just. Scrapping, mm. I was scrap like I was always a scrapper in school. I've I've had numerous fights, won some, lost some, but I think like yeah, like I feel like literally like lashing out took a lot of took a lot out of me. Mm. I might lash out in class, throw a chair like I was a I was a chair thrower, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was a I was a, I was a chair thrower, I was a chair thrower, but it was a thing where. I was a likable character in school. Like mm-hmm. even this, even some of the teachers liked me, so they knew that this was just out of pain. Mm-hmm. They knew I wasn't just acting a fool. Some some kids in school they would just act a fool and it would be fucking annoying. But some like with that they might have known the context. Some teachers might not have known. But I was just lashing out. I might throw a chair and then that like and then the teacher might talk to me. I might get sent out for for like the whole week. Mm-hmm. But then just being by myself like that will help release a lot. Yeah. Did you feel you ever fitted in in school? Yeah, 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 definitely. I fit in with my school is like what majority three quarters black, bro. But the other, the other quarter, bro, you were either Turkish, white, or Asian, mm-hmm. bro. I can, fit, I, I could have fit into any crowd, and that's why I feel like now what I do, I can adapt to any sort of crowd. Like the street interviews and that, I can just talk to anyone, and that's that's just come from school. Cause you know, what I mean, school, my school is so multicultural. Like we see, you can see anyone in my school, and yeah, like. It was, it was never hard for it. Never mm. hard for me, yeah. In the street interviews, you just got up straight away. And yeah, just, just got people. straight away, man. You get me? You just got up straight away, man. <laughs> no, no enhancers or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you spoke about in terms of like the multicultural school and yeah. helping you be adaptable in today um, in what you're doing content-wise. So w- what are you doing? Um, why do it? What are you doing today? Uh, what am I doing In the today? present. Okay. What's your work? Um, so what I do today, mm. block report, mm-hmm. um, cold drinks podcast, but that's on a hiatus right now. We're just trying to rebrand it mm-hmm. and presenting, bro, like presenting a and R in as well, finding and developing artists through my live shows. Um, big up shakes. He he um, won my last live event, mm-hmm. and he had so many talks with labels after that event. Um, so yeah, how does that make you feel? Ah, oh, sick, man, because it, it makes me feel like I'm changing lives now. Do you know what I mean? Like before the live event, before that, he was practically undiscovered. But then after that, his platform has just risen. Do you know what I mean? His brand has risen and whatnot. It's, it's sick, man. Because it sh- it this is always what I wanted to do. Do you know mm. what I mean? Platform artists, spotlight them and make sure I'm making a difference in the rap scene in general. So yeah, definitely. And you seem like, to me, yeah. sitting across from you and hearing you speak, you seem incredibly ambitious. Yeah. So... Be honest with me. How happy are you with where the block report is right now versus I where you want it to be? I am not happy, bro. <laughs> I'm not happy, but that's just literally like my ambition, bro. Mm. Like, I, I, it can go so much further, but it's literally timing. Like, I know within two years where I want it to be, it's going to be there. Mm. When I pitched it to Mixtape Madness, it was on 90's Baby at the time. I knew I'm going to Mixtape Madness to pitch it to them. I knew that I'm going to get it on this platform because I came over prepared. So it's like when I plan for things, it's due to happen. At this current moment, I know I don't, I'm not happy where it is right now, but it's not actually a problem because I know that it's just a matter of steps. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's literally just a matter of steps, man. But I've had the likes of Tef, Koji Radical, mm. Lippy, Jordi, I've M1 on the beat. And I've had guests on there and at the level that it's been at, it's actually overachieving. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad with it, but being ambitious, I'm not happy with it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I know that it can do so much better. I often view ambition as a gift and a curse because mm. I'm the same as you. I'm very, very ambitious. And it's great because you're like, right, we can get here. This is how we're going to get there. But sometimes, like you say, it's all time. And sometimes it doesn't get there on your time scale. And for me, 
being honest, that sometimes puts me into quite dark places where I'm like, why is this not where I want it to be? I'm doing all these things. It's great content, this, that, and the other. Would you yeah. say that resonates with you? Yeah, yeah. Comparison is the fee for joy. I always, I've even got it written on my whiteboard at home. Comparison is the fee for joy. I feel like when I compare myself to a lot of my peers, that's when I think, fuck, why am I not doing enough? Mm. But then I realise, I, I backtrack and I think, they're probably thinking the same thing. They're probably looking at me thinking, wow, like Silla's doing so much. Duh, 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 duh. Mm. But if I just pre my own thing, I'm doing my thing regardless. Mm. Mm. I feel like when I reflect, I feel like reflecting is always good when you realise how many people that you've put, you've put mm. onto your platform, how many people you've put on. And it's like, it's, it's yeah, I think... I will, I will never be satisfied, bro. Mm. With me, I've clocked it. I will never be satisfied. But that's that's a gift and a curse, like you said. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the ambition in me. Like I've always kept that fire in my belly. And when I don't have that fire in my belly, that's when I get. That's when I go into a deep, dark place. Because I realise, like, why am I, why am I feeling so weird? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How often do you get in that place? Uh, I'll say, uh, I'll say, like every quarter. So like. This could be, yeah, every quarter of the year, so quarter one, quarter two, it'll happen once. And then I'll be, I'll just think to myself, pick your, pick your fucking self back up. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no time for sulking. Do you know what I mean? Everyone else around you is working. Everyone else probably feels the same way you do, so pick yourself back up. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like my, I don't like seeing myself sulk. Yeah. And I've got, I've got a quiet, I've got a really good support system, actually. Mm -hmm. The man them support me hard, hard. Shout out Flash God, man. They support me hard. And, um, Family, yeah, family. Family is the thing I keep closest to me. Family is the best thing to me, like. So, yeah. I wanted to ask you a little bit as well and just to kind of tie into, I guess, the comparison being the thief of joy. So, you're 24, right, yeah. if uh, the, the article's correct. I'm 25. And, again, I think age can be a big thing sometimes mm. in terms of why am I not here? I'm this old. This person is five years younger than me and they're already doing amazing things. How do you cope with the pressure of age? <laughs> age, uh, age is crazy because just the other day I was 21. <laughs> I mean, bro, like what the fuck, man? I was 21 the other day and that's when I first started in the media thing. And then mm -hmm. um, up until 22, 23, everyone's telling me, oh, you're praising me, you're doing well. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm a young, I'm a young guy, man, mm -hmm. I'm doing well, come on, give me all the praise, guys. Fuck, I'm 24 now. Oh my God, my birthday's in six months, I'm gonna be 25 soon. So now, I'm thinking, cool, time is ticking, but that's where, that's where literally I keep the fire in my, in my belly through reflecting at what I've done in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I think um, a lot of older heads, they, they tell me, and they might tell you as well, like your twenties fly by, make sure you value it and make sure you do the most. And I've, I've realized that now, do you know what I mean? Four years in my, in, into my twenties, let's say five years, it's, it's flown by, you know what I mean? I can remember all my teens more than my twenties. And um, yeah, I, I think when older heads just tell me, your twenties are gonna fly by, work now and make sure you stay fit and look after yourself. That always scares me. Mm. That always scares me. So I make sure that every day actually counts mm. because the weeks are flying by like anything now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you make sure then that you make the most out of your days? What's, what's um, kind of your mechanism or routine to ensure mm. what I'm making today count? Um, well, I'm a Muslim, so I pray. I pray. Um, I would say planning. I think planning, you can never go wrong, wrong with planning. If you plan wrong, at least you planned. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I always say that because that's literally trial and error. Um, I, uh, I would say bad habits, cut them out. With me, I've, I've, I've relapsed so many times, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I used to be a smoker, innit? And like, I relapsed so, I relapsed so many times, but it's, it happens, innit? But I think it's good to fail. So I feel like um, making sure that... Why is I it good to fail? Because you know, you know what you're doing wrong. If you don't try, you will never ever know. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I've tried so many things in the past and they failed. So many things have been successful. But if you try things, if you try something three times and you fail twice and you succeed once, that's a success. That's mm. successful because at least you know what you're good at. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think that's how I make the most of my time. Trial and error, cutting out bad habits and a routine and making sure that I stay on my dean as well because my dean is definitely important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good answer. Mm. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, yeah, I'm happy, bro. The hesitation session. 
<laughs> you know what it is? It's like, I, ref- I, I self-reflect. So every minute of the day, bro, I'm thinking, what can I do to improve? It might make me unhappy, but then, like, I deep. I think, do you know what it is? I think the unhappy bit comes from my environment. I wake up every day, I might leave my yard in the morning and come back in the night, but I'm always seeing a fucking council estate. I want to get out of this place. You know what I mean? It's, it, it pisses me off. Like, whenever I see a block, I see a fucking nitty living next to a flipping crack house. It's like, it's dead. Do you know what I mean? It's dead. Like, but it's, it's an environment that I'm kind of accustomed to since young. And it's like, jumping, like, I might just walk on a high road, but in Tottenham, in the surrounding areas, Tottenham, Hackney, and whatnot, you always got to look over your shoulder. So really, I'm always on edge. I feel like a lot of black youths in inner city, we don't realise it. So a lot of them don't realise it. Some do, but we're actually always on edge. So we're always looking over our shoulder or whatnot to see what's happening. It might be police, it might be the next group of men, but always on edge, do you know what I mean? But I am happy because both of my parents are alive, healthy. Um, all my brethren are alive. Um, family's good so I, I can't actually complain I can't complain I'm healthy myself I'm healthy I'm healthy so when, I, when I've got a little flu bro I'm down bad bro I just want to stay in bed all day and I'm thinking oh fucking shit bro but no I'm happy bro I'm good I'm good trust me you say it always on edge though and yeah. I think that that's a sad yeah. but really powerful point yeah have you ever felt bliss comfort no cares in the world um, nah never I feel like as a guy, you can never have that feeling. You can never feel too comfortable. I feel like that's a girl thing. <laughs> I, feel like, bro, I feel like that's a girl thing, man. I feel like as a guy, you can never feel so comfortable in your skin. There's always something to do. There's always a mission you've got to complete. There's always like, you always got to be on your purpose, man. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you're, you're ambitious, bro. You will know about always being on your purpose and staying ticked on because if you don't, I feel like as, as guys, like it's a competitive market until you die. Like, we're always competing with different men and whatnot. So, it's, yeah, bro. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm never just, like, satisfied. Never. Mm. You say there's always a mission you've got to complete. Yeah. Always. What is the mission in the future? The mission, to be honest, music, I'll say music, I wouldn't say media, but music in specific, specifically, I would have to eventually... Um, leave that because the mission is the deen in it like i said i'm muslim and there is a hereafter so mm. i do wish to um do right in this world right now to make sure the afterlife is, is satisfactory do you know what i mean so the, the real mission on this earth is is literally to, to for, for me to praise Allah, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To fear Allah and to make sure that you're doing the good deeds. I think that's where my good heart comes from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Making sure that you're always doing people right. I think that's the real mission, making sure you're doing people right. You keep the you keep your integrity and you're just honest. You're just an honest person, honestly. Mm. Yeah. I think they're important values. Um, I'm just thinking about what you said about your unhappiness comes from your environment and that being the council estate. How much motivation do you have to take yourself and your family out of that place? So much, so much. It's funny because my mum actually wants to buy that house. It's, it's, it's a, it's a mum thing, isn't it? Like it's the family house. She wants to retain it and whatnot. But um, a lot of motivation. And I think that's where Block Report comes from. Like it literally is it's filmed on my council estate. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I flipped it into something positive, um, like literally commentating about UK rap, grime, R&B, UK culture in general on my block. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's a flip in itself. So literally when when um, my, my, my camera guy, my um, videographer, New Jay, when he does come to the state, I'm like, yo, every single episode we've had, like, let's say like 50, it's bro, like... I'm thinking, I'm really on my estate filming content and people are taking it in. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's something that a lot of people can identify with, whether you're from a council estate or not, whether you're work, it's, you're, it's a working class environment. And I feel like that's something that everyone can relate to. Well, not everyone, sorry, but working class people can relate to. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's how I flip it. How important is it for you to be relatable? You used that word a few times now. Uh, sorry? How important is it for you to be relatable and for your content oh, to be yeah. relatable? You've got to be relatable because there wasn't a lot of relatable people growing up anyway. The only ones would be, like I said, it will be rappers, mm. it will be shotters, it will be footballers. Um, but big shout outs to people like Poet, 
who actually did this before I did. Mm. Um, and he, he's not even far from me. He's from Tottenham too. So when I did see him growing up on Channel U and whatnot, it was like, yo, I want to do the same thing. Obviously, football was there first, but if it wasn't that, it was like, I like what he's doing mm-hmm. and the spinning he's put, the spin he's put onto it. So I think relatability, it matters because that's how people take in your content the most. Mm. So, um, and like I said, integrity, if you remain that integrity, that's where Block Report comes from because it's, it's, it's integrity and it's just raw and honest from the aesthetics to how I speak to the interviews and that. It's just honest. It's honest content because mm-hmm. it's stripped down. It's not a fancy studio setup. It's on my block, uh, two mics and a camera. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's interesting. From like a more personal perspective, because mm-hmm. we've spoken a lot about work mm-hmm. and your career aspirations within music, within media and stuff like that. From a personal perspective, what does like an ideal life look like in terms of kids, in terms of stuff like that? What does that look like? Um, kids, definitely, bro. Kids, definitely. Like, I want to have like, I want to have three kids. You know what I mean? Two wives. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, bro, I'm allowed, bro. I'm Muslim, bro. I'm allowed. No, 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 no. Listen, they're gonna kill me, man. They're gonna kill me. My future missus. I ain't got no girl, but if I did, she would have killed me, bro. <laughs> Shout out, shout out with a girl in there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, no, definitely, like, I told my guys, I told the man all the time, bro, I want to retire in Gambia, innit? I'm from Gambia. Yeah. I want to I retire in Gambia. What age? Uh, I'll say 50, 55, 60, 60, I'll say 60. There's still so much work to do because 50 is 25 years away. Yeah. That's, that's, that's quick, man. But um, yeah, bro, literally, I'm a traditional guy, bro. Like, kids... Wives. <laughs> wife, a wife, like, you know what I mean? Like, family home, like, all of that, like, literally, that's the plan. That mm. is the plan, like. I want, I want an easy life. I'm an easy guy, bro. Like, but for now, lifestyle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Lifestyle? For now, what does the ideal lifestyle look like? For right now, in my 20s, bro, it's literally, like, what I'm doing now, of course, the media shit, but, um, Bro, I want a club in it, like club yeah. in, like gal is there. This, like, is, this is an interesting I'm not a materialistic concept. guy, though. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm actually not materialistic, but I do like materials. I think they're they're nice. Um, I'm not even a car car guy kind of guy, but like all my man them are. Like yeah. we, we we love the lifestyle. We do yeah. love lifestyle. Yeah. You say lifestyle, and this is an interesting concept, and I think it's probably the downfall of me sometimes. <laughs> so, um, how detrimental do you think an ideal lifestyle yeah. now? So going out clubbing, yeah. girl, whatever is to your later aspirations. It is, man, because it's a thing where, bro, women will kill you, man. <laughs> the girl will kill you, but it's even a thing where, bro, like, if we're talking about the times we're living in now, the cost of living, bro, there's no time to be doing lifestyle, bro. Like, the times I've done lifestyle, I've had to recoup it over the next couple of weeks, and I'm like, fuck. Mm-hmm. But I did enjoy it, though. I did enjoy it, and it was fun, but it's like, um, sacrifice has got to be made, so... Mm-hmm. Honestly speaking, like, jokes aside, me and my guys, we don't party much. We party probably two, three times a year. And um, it's a thing where, because we're all on a mission together. So if one of us blows, we all blow. So it's a thing where sacrifice has got to be made, whether that's buying the latest trainers, whether that's clubbing every weekend or even every month, um, whether that's, like, women... You know what I mean? I think, I think gal is the hardest thing. I'll be honest, man. What? Because I love, I love women, bro. I love women, man. Like, <laughs> bro, I love gal. Like, I've always been, I've always been a man that likes gal, innit? And it's a thing where it's like, yeah, like, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. But I think moderation, mm-hmm. all in moderation. I think I do take a break from a lot of these things to, to make sure that I'm keeping up with, with, the, with, with, the people around me mm-hmm. because the people around me are like they're mad inspirational and they're very ambitious mm-hmm. and they're doing a lot of things whether that's financially whether that's um, their career path or whatnot so I always got to keep up to make sure that I'm on the same level like I said as, as guys mm-hmm. it, it, we're all competitive with each other mm-hmm. subconsciously like with our mates or whatnot and that's a good thing because it, it makes sure it makes sure that we're all on our toes mm-hmm. so yeah definitely man good final question yeah what message do you have mm. to yourself in five years' time? Uh, message to myself in five years' time, I'll say, don't fear anything. Fear, I think, 
Um, I even I think I even said it in my article. I think I even said it in my article. Fear. I think fear is my biggest problem, and I don't want it to disturb me in five years to come because it will block a lot of opportunities. Whether that's fear of um, I'll say I'll say on the surface of things, fear of um, like taking on let's say certain pieces of content, fear of. Um, um, fear of ideas because a lot of the time I fear a lot of my ideas and I feel like they won't work or I feel like the, the public won't actually cater to it or mm. my audience um, fear of taking risks I want to take a lot more risks even though I do take risks now still take more risks because there's time as, as a 24 year old man like there's always time to make mistakes maybe when I'm 30 I can't make it in five years to come but now is the time to be taking a lot more mm. risks so don't fear any risks like so yeah I'll say fear don't don't fear anything just do it just do it man honestly yeah it's a good message so I have to finally ask you before we wrap up mm. out of your catalogue of connections industry yeah. people who do you nominate to uh, to join me on the on the interview platform Ooh. next, who would you like to see have a similar conversation? I would say mm, mm, mm. face face. I nominate you. <laughs> face. I, I want to see face because I feel like face is pure hearted, mm. and I feel like she got such an interesting character, and I want to I want to hear more about her mm. and more in depth um yeah she she she's the best she's my favorite person in this whole industry she is the best the most like she she's yeah she's the best yeah see if we can make it happen yeah definitely nice one bro <laughs> thank you so much no honestly worries, man. incredible yeah i appreciate it <laughs> nice <laughs> one